Thanks to the internet, the world has a wealth of information available to it, and that's created a lot of know-it-alls. But how come most of the know-it-alls I run into, they're dumb as a box of rocks? Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another hardly edited first run stream of consciousness uh, chat today. And this has been on my mind a, a lot lately. And it's about how people become informed, how they become experts in something, and like the effect that the internet is having on this phenomenon. Um, I, I can imagine, you know, 100 years ago or even longer uh, before. Uh, general information was available to the populace uh, before libraries and media and, and the internet, of course. Uh, a lot of people got their information firsthand from uh, experience. You know, you know wh whether it's working uh, in a shop as, a, as an apprentice or from your parents who passed down their knowledge. And, and your m knowledgeable like, sphere is, was, was always very limited. Um, you had some, uh, what are they called, uh, polymaths that knew a, a little bit about everything or a, a lot about everything, but you know, no one could ever know everything about everything. It's just uh, physically impossible. You don't have the time or the brain power to learn about every last thing in the world. But what, what got me thinking about this was like one particular aspect was diet and how there's so much information out there. There's like a million sources online, on TV, uh, magazines, um, social media, and a lot of it's hype. There's, there's all this trending stuff, you know, whether it's fitness regimens like CrossFit or, or the other uh, type of um, fitness uh, things that are happening. And, and a lot of this is just mainstream information. And what a lot of people do is they, they jump on a bandwagon before really trying it out. And I, I, have, I broke this whole information thing down into four kind of like logical steps. You know, you have your information. It could be someone proclaiming to have a solution to something or it could be, it could be anything. Uh, a book, an instruction manual that, should, that says, hey, uh, 90 days to a better body. Um, what I think most people skip over before they, they uh, follow a particular set of information and parrot its, uh, its uh, benefits, it's self-experimentation. And that means uh, it's sort of like a trial and error situation. You know, it's like you can follow a program or you could custom it your own way. Um, and it's also, you know, questioning what, what they're teaching in these particular programs. And it's also following your instinct to some degree based on your own prior experience, which is why the older you get, the more you can either decide right away that a program's not going to work or, um, or otherwise. And then the next step, of course, after the ex you've entered the experimentation phase, and that's where you validate whether the information that you received is good. And if you can repeat successfully something over and over and over and over again that means that the information you received is good and if you try and fail and you try again and it doesn't work and you tweak it and try again and it doesn't work then you know that your experiment has invalidated that information that you receive and over time after various forms and flavors of trying something you get true knowledge um, i don't think true knowledge can truly ever be um, claimed just by reading something. Um, it has to, you have to be able to repeat that information. Um, I mean, obviously this takes different shapes and forms. You know, you have scientific information, you know, uh, four cups equals a pint or whatever. No, four, four cups equals a half, a, a, a quart. Okay. That's valid scientific measurement. But, and politics is a whole nother thing, which is garbage in my opinion, because politics is, is wrong to begin with and all these forms of government and laws that we have. But there are things that work, and I, I'm really fascinated with, the, uh, with things like the diet industry, because I read uh, these, these low carb diets and a lot of people are still peddling sweet things and i've determined but over many years many years of you know i was like my own personal lab rat 
um, that one thing that finally stood out after many, many years of, of eating low carb and trying to, to get my appetite and, and hunger under control. And I, I realized that sweets, anything sweet, even the good sweeteners that they're proclaiming now, like xylitol and erythritol, are not smart to eat because they mess with your body and they knock you out of, of the rhythm that you're in. So I really think that when it comes to, to true knowledge, you have to have time and experience with that particular thing, whatever it may be. And, you know, it, firsthand inf information. I did it. It was my experiment and I can, I can prove it to you. Um, and one other benefit about not just believing wholeheartedly the things that you read, even if it works for just a short period, is that by using the time and experience, you get to fortify your, your resolve, so to say. Like, I can resist sweets now because I, I'm plain and simply unhappy with the way I feel when I eat them. Um, it's not because a book told me so, and I'm sure I could find a book that says avoid all sweets. But even, you know, like I can write a book right now about things that work, but if I was me in a separate body reading this book, I would have to find out for myself. Like stumbling on your own, it creates a real experience. And, and that's that. And, and a couple other things you can do to vet out your information is just observe the world in general. You know, like again, with diet, you could see what people are eating and, and like you see these overweight people eating healthy things in their cart and you could tell that the, the one aspect of their cart that's out of place is carbs and you could see it right away. It may be organic, it may be gluten-free, it may be free range or sustainable or whatever. And they don't realize that it's their blood sugar that, that, that's messing up. And there's some other good ways to get information quickly without having to vet it out. Uh, and that's establishing trusted sources, people who have proven themselves to be right many, many, many times or shared their mistakes and explained why they made their mistakes in like a very transparent process. And then you can start building up a little personal network of, of knowledge. Uh, like a like a mini personal hive mind where you can share uh, share your trials and errors, but that's it. I I just wanted to ramble on a little bit about about how people get their information these days, and I see so much of it out there where people jump on some sort of belief, and and it happens a lot with politics and other internet culture, where they just they're in a camp for some stupid reason. They they really really don't understand why, and they don't really believe in that. I mean, they don't belong in that camp. They should be doing something else with their time. It's a big waste to to get involved. So that's it. This is just a random, a random non New Jersey related. Uh, philosophical and psychological discussion. I'll talk to you guys later in the week.